everybody, welcome back to Happy Plate. My name is Jewel, and I have a really great story for you today about a good girl. Actually, no, about the goodest girl, Juliana the Great Dane. I'm gonna tell you about how she saved her family from a bomb. I'll give you a little hint. It may or may not have to do with her bladder. <laughs> First, let me show you what I am eating today. So we have a very large bowl of chicken broccoli alfredo, homemade, courtesy my sister. Again. Again. <laughs> you can't have an Italian pasta dish without um, some garlic bread, so it smells amazing. Let's dive in. We'll do first bites, and then I'll jump into the story, and I'll tell you about Juliana. Okay, here we go. First bites. Oh, I already stuck my hand into my bowl. <laughs> That's okay. My germ. All right, here we go. First bites. This must be what a guy's like who has a beard. They probably have to like... Push their beard down yeah. or they just don't care. Yeah. Get pasta sauce all in their beard. Ew. Ew. Homemade Alfredo sauce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big bites. Mm -hmm. mm. The chicken is so good. Mm. A little bit. Mmm. Do you hear that crunch? Mm. It's so loud. One of the best parts of garlic bread. It's delicious. This one's fine. Good job. All in one bite. ASMR bite. Ready? ASMR. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's a technique to this. Twirl, stab, and I need everything, so stab. <laughs> <laughs> Twirl, stab, stab. And fit it all in your mouth somehow. You think I can do it? Yeah, you got a big mouth. I told you. <laughs> so good. Carbohydrates, one of the four macromolecules of blood. Carbohydrates, one of my favorite of anything in life. <laughs> you gonna tell us anything about this dog? Very crunchy. Let's talk about Juliana. It's 1941. It's World War II, right? And Britain is under attack uh, by Germany. And it's the Blitz. It's said to have killed 40,000 civilians. So this is like, wow. it's raining bombs, right? Yeah. So one day, Juliana's just minding her own business at her home in Bristol, England. An incendiary bomb comes through the roof and she doesn't think twice. This Great Dane just gets up and she walks right over to the bomb, stands over it, and she disarms it by peeing on it <laughs> and saves her family. So Juliana actually ended up receiving a Blue Cross medal for this, for saving her family. It was wasn't the only time that Juliana got the Blue Cross medal. A few years later, there was a fire that uh, broke out in her owner's shoe shop and she actually went and alerted all of the occupants and everyone evacuated and she saved everyone. There were no injuries, no deaths. So she was presented with the second Blue Cross medal, which is Ow. kind of amazing. <laughs> and she was just a civilian dog too. It's not like yeah. she was like military trained or anything. So the- And what type of dog was she? She was a Great Dane. Dane. The owners yeah. weren't anything like military. Or... No, they were just like people in England, just oh, chilling through shop. World War II. Yeah, shoe shop owner. And it's weird because her story almost was just kind of forgotten about. Up until recently, in 2013, there was a home that was um, 
it, there was like a clearance on this home in in Bristol in England and everything was being auctioned so the auctioneers went through this house and actually came across like a huge painting of her and then there was a plaque talking about how she peed on a bomb and saved her family <laughs> and then they then later on in a different part of the house they came across the second medal that she got for um for you know getting everyone out of the burning building that's so weird yeah they ended up auctioning off the plaque the metal and the painting and they had like a pre-sale rough estimate amount set and it sold for like 18 times that amount Whoa. yeah because people just love when dogs do anything yeah really i mean they just have to exist it was probably exactly a, a great dane enthusiast too. yeah mm -hmm. what a great great dane yeah, you know. unfortunately she um, she passed away in 1946, so it was actually only a couple years after the fire. Somebody put poison through the letter slot, you know, like the mail drop through mm. a door, and she ate it. Oh. And she was poisoned and she died. That's sad. Oh, Who would do that? Baby. I know. I researched and tried to find out, anything. like, I couldn't find anything on it. Wow. So people, if anybody knows this story, or knows, like, what, where it came from, who was it? supposed to be for anybody yeah. knows leave us a comment and tell us because i'm meant for the dog maybe the fire and the shoe shop didn't just <gasps> oh my gosh yeah I maybe wonder... someone flew a world war ii plane and dropped the bomb <laughs> specifically <laughs> oh, over juliana's that, house but the fire that's a i weird. know isn't that weird though yeah. so that's the story of um juliana i thought that was really sweet i'll tell you a little bit about the blue cross the blue cross got its name from the blue flags that were flown over like animal hospitals to differentiate it from like the Red Cross, right? Which would were for the soldiers and stuff back in the war. The Blue Cross Fund is a charity in the UK that actually was originally created in 1897 and it was called Our Dumb Friends League. <laughs> Which is like... <laughs> Our Dumb Friends League? <laughs> yeah! I feel like That's the Blue mean. Cross definitely, you know, is better, better but yeah, yeah. I know animals dumb. I know so during World War one um, it was more for people who showed compassion towards animals um, they also would present it to like horses because horses were used to like carry um, artillery the charity would raise funds to care for animals that were injured in the war and so in World War II, they had raised enough money to care for 350,000 animals, wow. which is crazy. That's impressive. Yeah. While I was researching the Blue Cross, um, I came across a couple stories. So you guys want to hear about a couple other puppies? Sure. Okay. So the first one is Digger, who is a bulldog mix from Australia. So this actually takes place during World War I. He was a stray dog, and he was just like trotting down the street and he all of a sudden saw these guys all uh, walking and decided to join them and he followed them all the way back to their barracks they turned out to be Australian soldiers and so the soldiers decided to adopt him as their mascot and he stayed with them the whole time through their military training when it was time to go to war Digger sailed with the with the military company uh, to Egypt and then carried on again further to France and fought in the war in France. He was really well trained in the military. He would do things like uh, carry, he would, who's like a messenger dog. Um, if there was someone who was wounded in like no man's land where they couldn't get other soldiers in to, to bring them out or whatever, he would bring food to them. He would bring messages back and forth. He was even trained to the point where when the alarm, like the gas alarm would sound, he would run to his nearest human to be fitted for his gas mask. Aww. Isn't that so cute? That's so cute. I know. So he ended up serving with the same company, Australian company, in France for three and a half years. And in that time, he was wounded. He was gassed. Um, they, he had to use like all kinds of oils and stuff to take care of his injuries from being Aww. gassed. And then he was shot through the jaw and lost three teeth. Oh my God. And then he was blind in his right eye and deaf in his left ear. Oh my God. So he was like straight up in war. Yeah. You know? That's so sad. I know. Hurt a dog. I know. He actually has a really lovely, well, kind of a lovely ending. He ended up 
being adopted, the, the guy who mainly like adopted him and took care of him, Sergeant Martin, they went home together after they served and they both settled down in Sydney, Australia and he grew to be an old man. And then on one day, um, actually on Empire Day, which is a British holiday, there were fireworks going off and a little PTSD kicked in and he, so he, he was sleeping in bed and he um, ran away and he tried to jump a fence and then he fell backwards and landed on his back and burst a blood vessel and then he climbed back into bed and fell asleep and then he died in his sleep that night. Poor dog. I know. But they did reference him as an old man so yeah. I'm hoping that... So he, he grew. He lived for a while after. And he probably had a great life because he was a stray dog. Yeah. And then now he has all these owners and all this action. Owner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if he didn't want it, he, he could have he's a, a dog. He could have ran away, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he really he lived a life like yeah. more of a life than a lot of people live. Yeah. And so since this was World War 1, it was before they were giving the medals to the animals. Mm -hmm. So he actually received his medal um in 2013 Aww. there and it was a, a bulldog in his place so they used like a stand-in bulldog and they presented the medal to the grandson of his owner sergeant martin Aww. who was even an older guy himself too yeah, so super cute. cute i know all right let's get some eating done here and then i'll tell you guys about the last pup heroic puppy i was trying to go I think they were like sky puppies or something like that. Hmm. I have both boys right next to me. Waiting for me to drop a crumb. Monza. I've watched so many dogs with me. Yeah. A dog's life. A, a dog. Life. A dog's life. Yeah. That's, old Yeller too. Yeah, I won't I watch that one. Dude, it's so I sad. Mean, I actually cried. You need to read it. Old I Yeller. I never cry. I've read Old Yeller. Yeah. All right, I'm on my last bite. It came quickly this time. <laughs> Hold on. Let me just do a little bit of this. Get all that extra Alfredo sauce. No, 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 no. They're trying to get my last bite. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> I panic. I see them coming. All right, everyone. So I'm going to tell you about one more dog that was the recipient of the Blue Cross medal. And his name was Caesar. He was also a bulldog mix. And he also fought in World War I. He was actually the very first dog to receive the medal in New Zealand. So Caesar was actually trained with the Red Cross. So he was like straight up military dog. Mm -hmm. He trained with the Red Cross and then he ended up going over to France to fight in World War I as well. And so he was trained to um, bring medical supplies, to bring food back and forth to men in need, injured soldiers. He actually was trained to differentiate the allies and the enemy. So he would actually guide like peop the stretchers and stuff when they had to go and you know and, and save a soldier. He would be able to guide them. He actually saved at least 16 people. Wow. which is kind of amazing and he used mm -hmm. to always wear this little harness where he could uh, they'd fill up like food and water so he could bring it to uh, injured soldiers um, writing supplies paper pen unfortunately um, Caesar Aww. he didn't make it home so he was actually killed in action and when they found Caesar, he actually, it was him and another soldier that were both killed together. Aww. And the soldier's hand was resting on his head and they were both dead. Were they? I don't know. It makes you think that maybe the man at least was still alive for a little bit, like yeah. long enough to reach over and put his hand on the dog, like almost to comfort him or yeah. to comfort himself by, right. you know. Yeah. 
sad. Isn't it so sad? I know. So <laughs> I don't like sad Caesar got at all. Caesar got a medal, a, a blue cross medal for that too. I know. I was I was literally crying while I was reading this, and I I'm like, how am I gonna talk about this? You cry about everything. I cry about so. everything. It seems like I'm good right now. Are but. like superhero dogs, huh? Mm. I know. I thought it was kind of funny that they were both the the two from World War One were both yeah. bulldogs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they did the same thing in 2019. Actually, it, Caesar's um, family's ancestors uh, accepted the the medal oh, really? on his yeah. behalf. So yeah, cute. I know. Super cute. So the the <laughs> Blue Cross Fund is actually still an organization now. They find homes for like stray animals, and then they they help out financially when people can't afford like uh, veterinary um, procedures and stuff. In World War One, I, I read that nine million animals were killed. Wow. Nine yeah. Million. Well, I mean, so many people were killed too. Yeah, it's crazy. So. And then, yeah. well, and during the war, the, this is the reason why the charity started was because they were raising money to treat the animals during World War One. There were a ton of horses that were killed or injured. There were a lot of dogs that were used too to like detect mines and like messenger dogs and like, stuff. Yeah, even now. Yeah. So what do you guys think about today's story about our three hero doggies? Well, it's always sad hearing about animals dying. But I know. I think so I'd never even heard of the Blue Cross before, so that's interesting. Yeah. It's, uh, like what would the U.S. equivalent to the Blue Cross be? SPCA. Oh yeah, probably. But I feel like when I was don't even reading this, so yeah. I was so sad. <laughs> I bet you. Yeah, the only one that was an okay ending was Digger, because yeah. he lived to be older, supposedly. But it's but sad that his PTSD is what killed. What him. triggered it exactly, yeah. and he got injured pretty badly. Very badly. He like lost three teeth, and he was blind and partially deaf, and poor dog. It it's was so weird sad. that this is the story you picked for today. I know. Well, I first came across Juliana's story, and I was like, this is really sweet. Mm -hmm. Like, she saved her family by peeing on a bomb. Like, yeah. that's an awesome story. <laughs> and led a bunch of people out to safety from a... Yeah, from the burning building. Yeah. And so I was like, well, what is this metal? Like, what's this Blue Cross metal? Because I've never heard of it. And then that's when I came across Digger's story. And then I came across, hey, 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 no cookies for you. <laughs> and then I came across um, Caesar's story. And they were so sweet. It's like the uh, purple heart. For dogs. Yeah. Exactly. For, for heroism. And I think it's cool that they're now recognizing these dogs from before they were actually giving yeah. the medal to the animals. Yeah. Do you know uh, what happened to the Juliana's fa Julian Julian Juliana Juliana's Juliana's family? family. Uh, no, but I did watch a cute short little documentary on Digger's family, and um, so Sergeant Martin ended up getting married, and his wife. Uh, or his family talked about how his wife would say he would get up like in the middle of the night and he'd go out in the hallway and start yelling and and he would have like PTSD attacks too mm -hmm. like he was back in the war and he would just be running through the house in the middle of the night yeah I so bet. yeah so it, it makes me like so sad but at the same time it's like how sweet is it that they both suffered something terrible with the PTSD but they they probably suffered together for a little while yeah they had each other to yeah to get like they it. both went through it together they both mm -hmm. you know had the aftermath together and well right. until he passed away but yeah you know, it always goes back to it being sad it is <laughs> anytime an animal gets hurt animals are the only thing that's like they're so pure and innocent, innocent. Yeah. like babies yeah, exactly. Except babies not everyone loves babies, animals. but everyone loves dogs. Yeah. Being <laughs> or have a soul if you don't love Yeah, dogs. you're soulless if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, so that was our story. Thank you everyone for joining us and listening and watching me eat. There's always room for dessert, so I'm going to dig into these cookies that... And I'm sorry if I've just been looking at the chocolate chips on this thing. <laughs> So I'm gonna eat this. You know what to do. If you liked this episode, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you wanna hear more stories every Thursday, then subscribe to Happy Plate. And if you have any comments, if you have any feedback about any of these stories or anything to add, um, just leave us a comment below. We'll see you next time.